Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Hello and welcome to another episode of Living the Dream with Curveball. I'm your host, Curveball, and today... I am joined by Brent Basham. He is the co-founder of Potted.net. And we're going to talk about his service today and everything that it provides for the guests and the podcaster. So, Brent, thank you for joining me today. Oh, man, absolute pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Well, first of all, why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself, maybe where you're from and a little bit of background about yourself. I know you used to do a podcast as well. So maybe you kind of talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, you know, climate goes up and down here right now. It's really cold. Sometimes it's really hot. Never seems to be pretty stable. We never know what to get in the winter. Uh, but so I'm from Atlanta and yeah, you mentioned podcasting. I did that about 2014 was when I jumped into this space. Um, wasn't quite as popular as it was now. It was just kind of getting started. And I fell in love with it. We, you know, I did it because really because my kids and we were out there, me and a co-host, uh, my co-host, we were just now going back to school and for computer science. And I met him there and we ended up working together. And one of the interesting things we realized was we were the very last people who were digital immigrants and we were raising the very first generation of digital natives. You know, my kids will only ever know being connected on the internet. They'll never know not being connected on the internet, but I do know that. And so it was a really interesting generational change, you know, because I came from a time when you were out riding your bike and you were doing all these things. And then I grew up around video games and I saw all of it unfold. Um, and so we started a podcast called Digital Dads to just sort of talk about what it means to raise kids in this new digital world, because we didn't come up in it. So we didn't really know how to you know identify with them and, and understand the things they were going through because it was different when I was a kid. So yes, that's kind of where you know I kind of got the bug for podcasting. We did that for a couple of years and had a lot of great guests on there, had a lot of great relationship with our listeners, just absolutely loved doing it. And you know, our listeners got a ton of value from the guests we were able to bring on to the show. And you know, but as being a dad, you know, after a while the podcast, as I'm sure you know, Curtis, takes a lot of time and effort to get the guests, to do all the effort, you know, the editing, all of the parts around doing the show take time. And I was doing a show about being a dad. So at some point we decided it's better to, for us to focus on being a dad. And we loved the show and we made great friendships and things through there, but it was just ran its course. Um, but a couple of years later, we decided to start this platform to better help people find and connect for podcast interviews because we really thought there was a better way to do it. So how long has Potted.net been going? So let's see, we launched at an event in September of 2019. So I guess a little over a year. Um, and I say that when we launched, we had zero people. And as you can imagine, a platform like this or any platform, you know, with a network, it's not real valuable until you start to get some people in there. So it was a slow climb for a little while until we started to get some traction and uh, and then after we did get some traction from that point till now, we've helped book over, I think, 2,600 interviews now. So it's been really great to see some of these conversations and these connections happen that maybe wouldn't have happened otherwise. I really, I really enjoy that part of it. Well, let's talk about the phrase digital immigrant that I heard you mention. What what does that actually mean? And, and how did you come up with that phrase? That's a pretty good, pretty good, yeah. interesting phrase. I wish I could take credit for it, Curtis. So I heard that, uh, and I think I read that in a book somewhere, but the idea is that, you know, an immigrant means somebody that comes from, you know, one place to another. And so the idea of a digital immigrant means really those of us who come from a place where we didn't really have technology, which is the early part of my childhood. I won't go too deep into my age, but I was a child of the 80s, more or less. And so I remember not having computers. I remember the first computers. I remember you know, AOL and video games and all that stuff starting to happen. 
So that's what it means by immigrant is I went from one and I immigrated into the new world. And now, of course, we're all all connected. I'm very much into technology, but I remember what it was like without it. And I think that's the key difference for, you know, what my kids would be considered digital natives is that they don't remember what it was like without it. They don't remember not being able to just look on a device that's in their hand to look something up or to connect with somebody or to text somebody. All of that stuff is just they assume it's always kind of been there. But for me, I remember a time when it wasn't always there. Yeah, I do, too, as well. So me and you might be about the same age. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the the good things of your service for podcasters and then we'll move over into guests and you can talk about the free and the pro but let's talk about the podcaster side first when a podcaster signs up what's the good advantages that they get from your service yeah so we really want to make it where you're going to be able to identify the right guest and i think that's important both when you're reaching out to a guest and also the guests coming to you so when you're reaching out to a guest, we give you ways to, you know, browse the directory. You can search and you can find uh, a guest based on keywords. So if they are an attorney or if there's a certain topic, like for me, well, my old show, I might look for cyberbullying or video games or social media. So you can search those terms and get a list back of those guests. And you can certainly just browse as well. So we try to make it easy for you to identify. And we're actually, I'll give you the inside scoop, Curtis, because I imagine this will be released before you release this episode, probably. But we're releasing uh, a feed, at, which is basically a place for you to post, find a guest or be a guest type uh, post. So for a podcaster, let's say you're looking for a certain thing right now. You could put that post out there and say, hey, I'm looking for somebody to talk about this. And whether it be something in the news or whatever else, and you can put that out there. And then people can respond to you from that post. So you don't always have to go in and update your pod, your profile where people may not see it. You do the post and everybody looking at that channel will be able to see that post. And if they're a good fit, they can reach out to you. So that's one way. And then <clears throat> on the receiving side, we give you the option, if you choose to, to add right there on the platform, you can add a list of questions. And so everybody that applies to your show would then have to fill out these questions and then when you go to look at these requests that got sent to you, you would then be able to look at those questions and those answers and see if, you know, just kind of help you identify if they might be a good fit before you get into reading everything they have to say, because they might not hit all the key points that you might want to know about before you even consider them as a guest for your show. And everybody's different. So it's completely customizable for whatever questions you might have for them. Uh, some people are really concerned about, you know, microphone or their technique on that or their equipment. Some people are more concerned about, you know, their credentials or just whatever you want to ask. You can certainly ask. So that's kind of how it works. Um, it's pretty easy. Once you get in there, you create your pro podcast page. And then if you see a guest, you just click the button, add the uh, add the request, and then that goes to them. They get pinged with an email if they have that turned on, which they do by default. And then um, they come back and say, sure, love to be on your show. Um, hopefully, most of the time, I would say, I think we get about... 50% of the podcasts that reach out to guests get accepted. So it's a pretty high high conversion rate for that. Absolutely. Now I have a question. You guys used to have it to where if somebody responded to you, if they wanted to be on your show, you got an email or, or if, if they responded to a message from you, you got an email that um, doesn't work anymore. Did that get turned off or is that something that you guys can bring back? Because I've uh, responded late to a guest because I was expecting the email. And all of a sudden I just go in and get to checking around and I'm like, oh, I didn't even know this person contacted me. No, actually, that should be working. If it isn't working, that's a bug. So if you wouldn't mind pinging me up there and I'll create a support ticket to get that worked out. But that should certainly be part of what we have. Um, absolutely. It was before. I don't know why it isn't working, but we can look into it and get it get a result. Absolutely. Now let, let's talk about what guests get when they sign up. And I know there's a pro version of Podit, so also mm -hmm. talk about that too and what what a guest can expect if they sign up. Yeah. So the same thing for the guest, where you can reach out to podcasters, just like you know, it's sort of the opposite side of the coin a little bit on the guest side, though. What we want to do is, <clears throat> what we've discovered actually, is that sometimes when you just give 
uh, the guests complete unfettered access, complete, you know, unlimited access, and they're not, they don't have any skin in the game. Some of them are a little spammy. And the challenge we found, well, it's twofold, right? Because we need to monetize in some way because we need to, in order, if we're going to be able to create a platform that works for everybody, we need money to pay developers and all that kind of stuff. But besides that, what we've also found is that when you let everybody on the platform just do it on, you know, completely as much as they want to, you, you end up with the podcasters not getting the best quality pitches sometimes. And so what we've done, I think we found a good middle ground there where for free as a guest, you can send out four requests per week. And then based on our statistics, that should get you typically one, maybe two actual interviews a week. So, I mean, you could book as many as eight or so interviews, uh, you know, anywhere two to eight, depending on how good your pitch is and depending on how, how good you do with that. But you can definitely book interviews on our, our service without paying. Uh, there are some advantages, though, because when you, you unlock more requests, but you also um, unlock the ability to put a video or really good feature is you can put past interview requests on directly on your profile. So, for example, Curtis, if you found somebody's profile, and they upgraded, they have the option to put their past interviews right there on their profile. So it's very easy for you to say, click a button and listen and say, oh, yeah, that sounds like they might be a good fit for my show. Because not all podcasters care about it, but I always like to listen to the guest if I can um, to get a sense of what they sound like on mic and their expertise and things before I invite them. And so that's one of the features there. And it's super easy for them to do it. All they have to do is search. And once they once they unlock it, they can just do a search. And they find the episode and they click a button and it just automatically adds it to their page. So it's super easy to do. So that's really the, that's really the big difference difference there is, you know, we wanted to make sure that people who were free, because we used to interview people like um, we had a doctor on my old show. We had um, university professors, things like that. And some of them might not get a return on investment as much as some other type guests. And we want to make sure those type of people are able to be on our platform and get value from our platform. So that's where we are right now. And of course, that you can be invited as much as you possibly can be. You're, you're available. You'll show up and search. Um, that's another advantage, though, to the paid is that when somebody does search, the paid versions do go higher because obviously those people are paying. We try to give them a little bit of an edge, you know, if they're trying to get booked on interviews. Is it possible to sign up? as a podcaster and, and a guest or does it have to be one or the other? No, it's, it's both. It's super easy. When you, when you go in and add your podcast, you automatically have a guest profile and all you really have to do is find a podcast and click the button to request an interview from them. I would say though, it's probably worthwhile to go ahead and take a look at your profile first, because chances are the podcaster is going to go look at that. So it might be worth taking a, just a bit of time to try to put, you know, put a good about section and some of that stuff in there before you reach out. But you can certainly do both. Yeah, no problem. We have that all the time. What other projects do you guys have coming up and any new features that you're looking to add besides the one that you just mentioned earlier about the feed? Yeah, so we're really leaning into the idea. So it's come to my attention that... A lot of podcasts really. Uh, oh, I should mention this too, Curtis. Uh, podcasters, um, a great way for podcasters to grow their downloads is to go and be a guest on other shows. So, again, we do have people doing both a lot for sure. Um, one of the things we're working on is, is really improving the inbox. So, for example, when you get a request in, we want to be able to um, allow you to have different states. So, it's not just accepted or declined. We have, you know, maybe uh, an accepted state, maybe a recorded state, a published state, because on each of those steps, there's things we can potentially add later. Like, for example, if you say this episode is published, we might want to prompt the guest, uh, give them an opportunity to go share it on social media. There's certain parts, um, and we may build in scheduling at some point, you know, so there's certain parts, if we know that the interview is in a certain state, we can prompt uh, people for certain things that have in my experience, were really difficult for a podcaster. It was for me. And I think that it's um, going to help with that. And another thing we're really working on right now a lot is sort of shifting a little bit into using the social, some social elements a little bit, right? So, 
for example, when you have um, people you're connected with who want to be able to easily recommend somebody because maybe you're a podcaster and you know another podcaster, maybe you and I know each other, and you might want to recommend a good guest that you think might be good for my show or vice versa. I might want to recommend somebody to you. But we need to introduce some social components so that we can start to do that. And then also, you know, when you think about when I look at a guest, I don't know right now on our platform, I don't know that you had a connection with that guest, but you might have already had a connection with them. And I'd like to see that so that I can have some idea that this person is is maybe a good fit. So some of those social elements, I think you'll start to see in the, in the pretty near future as well. Um, and one new thing we're about to add, which I think I really love this one. I don't know how much it'll, it'll resonate with everybody, but one of the things I used to do, um, Curtis, when I was looking for guests is I really loved to interview authors. It was one of my favorite things. And the reason why it was one of my favorite things is because most of the time when you interview an author, they've taken a lot of time to research a topic to write the book. So they're usually very knowledgeable. You can ask them deep questions. They're, they're very thorough. And because they've taken the time to write a book and, you know, regardless of how many copies they've sold, it takes a lot of effort and you have to really um, dive deep into a subject to write a book. So I didn't always interview authors, but I certainly love that. And so we're adding a section on the profile. At first, it's just going to show up as a section on the profile and it'll be a book section. So as a uh, guest, you can go in there and you can add a book. If you've written a book, you can add multiple. But what, what that'll enable us to do is basically create, as people start adding them, what that'll allow us to do is create a catalog of guests who have books who want to be interviewed. And so as that starts to populate, what you'll be able to do is we're going to have a separate section in the search. So when you do a search, it'll show you, you know, people, podcasts, and it'll also show books. And you'll see a list of books and you can find, you say, oh, that might be an interesting thing. And you click on that and you'll be able to filter it down by category or whatever. And then you'll click on that and it'll take you right over to their page where you can then invite them as a guest. So just one more way to help you find potential good quality guests for your show. So we're really leaning into how do we make this even better? And we, I think we have some things that are going to be really helpful for people. Sweet. Well, I know one time went to a podcast and networking thing, and that was a lady looking for baby boomers to interview them. And I said, Hey, I know this guy. He came on my show and he wrote a book about baby boomers. Maybe you should have him on. And I, I connected them up. I'm not sure what happened, but I gave her the information. So yeah, yeah that that's would fantastic. be good recommending, I guess. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, that's next... fantastic. I love to hear that. Absolutely. The next question that I have for you is how many guests do you imagine that Potted has and, and how do you go about finding these good guests? So I I think we have maybe twenty five hundred, three thousand people on the site. Um some of them are strictly guests, some of them have podcasts. Um the most of them, a lot of them do both. And, you know, Facebook group, we've obviously grown a big community there. And that's been a fantastic way because people are trying to do this on Facebook. And there's some things we can do better on our platform, but they're already on Facebook. So that's been a great place to find uh, people. And, you know, that's one of the things we, we set out early to become the best way for people to connect in for podcast interviews. But we know that there's other ways they're going to do it. So we said, well, we're going to put up a flag here on Facebook and have our own community there. I just recently got on Clubhouse and we are doing a um, a weekly Clubhouse meeting, which I don't know if anybody doesn't know, it's a brand new social network for audio only. And basically you go into these rooms and people can talk. But what we're doing is we're doing a find a guest, be a guest room. And we're letting people come up on stage, introduce themselves. And then if anybody that's in the audience wants to, you know, follow them or be a guest on their show if they want that or, you know, connect with them to be, to find um, the reverse of that, then we'll just basically facilitate, you know, enable those connections. So we're really trying to just be out there everywhere we can and really help everybody connect for, for podcast interviews. Because again, we, I know firsthand how much those guest interviews can really impact people. And so I'm really trying to do my part and, you know, obviously build a website at the same time, but, the main goal is to help people connect for podcast interviews. However, we can do that. Well, we definitely appreciate you. Is there anything else about Potted or, or any other things that you're working on in the future that we haven't talked about that you would like to talk about? 
No, man. I just, I, I love that, you know, you're out here doing this and, and really trying to put some good in the world, Curtis. I mean, it's, it's so valuable. I think um, having these conversations makes a difference. And so I just applaud you on doing that, man, and trying to, trying to make your, your little corner of the world a little bit better. You know, it matters. Well, I appreciate you for providing me with good guests. Go ahead and give out that website and throw out any contact information for people that might want to connect with you and get signed up to the service. Yeah, no doubt. So you can go on podit.net and you can check that out and get signed up easily free. There's a little bit of an onboarding, uh, about four or five steps. It's pretty quick that you can do it in about two, three minutes. And then um, if you want to connect with us on Facebook, it's it's a Facebook group. You can just search podit slash group slash podit, I think, P-O-D-D-I-T. And then on Clubhouse, you have to connect with me directly at Brent Bash right now until we get a, a club. There's like a bunch of hoops over there. But anyway, at B-R-E-N-T-B-A-S-H. And that way, if you follow me, you can jump in that room and get up on stage and maybe get some connections that way. Yeah, we got a few different ways to help you get connected for sure. Absolutely. I can't wait to get on there and connect with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Brent Basham. Brent, thank you so much for joining me today. My absolute pleasure. Thank you. And listeners, please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review after listening. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.